G'day and welcome to another gun repair video on my channel. A few weeks ago I was out at the range shooting a shotgun clay tag competition and I fired a couple of shots, opened the gun, reloaded a couple of cartridges into it but when I went to close it, it initially just wouldn't close. Let's get the snap caps out. So I went to close it, and it closed sort of most of the way, but it just seemed to be jammed. And what the hell is going on? So I immediately opened it and took the cartridges out that I was trying to load, and had a look and tried, tried it like this. Now I made a mistake at this point. What I should have done was recognised straight away that there was a mechanical problem with my gun and uh, just bound out of the competition and taken the fore end off and, and, and inspected it and it probably would have become evident what was wrong with it pretty much straight away but I didn't do that because I'm an idiot so I thought what's going on and I went to probably used a bit more force than normally went to close it and it basically closed almost completely shut but not quite the top lever was across to the side like that uh, and it was just jammed I couldn't get it open, I couldn't get it closed uh, it was just jammed and then when I looked at it I noticed that the trigger guard, the front of the trigger guard was bowed out so I knew there was some catastrophic breakdown on the inside of the gun so I brought it home as is and I actually took footage of the whole investigation and repair process. I do have a set of two videos that I did previously about just general, it was just general videos about replacing firing pins in brake action guns. There's a bit more information about diagnosing a broken firing pin in that without having to pull it apart like I did this one and uh, just general information so I'll just put a link up the top there for you if you want to watch those two uh, I'll put the two links up there's part one and part two part one is, is side lock guns both external and internal hammer and part two is box lock double guns and also just single shot guns this gun is a Spanish side lock uh, it's made by Armas Parkami or APM and it's basically made, it's styled after a high class English side lock gun um, as the straight, straight, very fine straight fore end and side locks with engraving. No, it's a, no ejectors, it's extractor only, double triggers, push button, fore end removal. So, a sort of a semi-budget gun, but a very nice gun. Uh, you won't, you, you, know, you would, wouldn't get any, any English side lock anywhere near uh, what I paid for this. So, and it's a very nicely balanced. Like they've actually copied the dimensions and everything of an English gun, and it actually mounts. I'm fairly average size and build, and it mounts fairly well. So let's have a look at this gun now before we start trying to uh, work out what's wrong with it and repairing it you can see that the uh, the breech is actually almost closed but not quite although it is locked shut I can't open it the levers the levers open over the right as far as, as it goes and the other thing that I've noted is if you see the trigger plate here it's actually bulging out so what I'm going to do is I'll remove the remove the locks first just get them out of the way um, and then I'll remove the stock and the trigger plate and hopefully we'll be able to then see what's going on the first thing we'll do is uh, remove the two side locks just to get them out of the way so I don't think they're actually involved but uh, at least we don't know that there's not going to be any problem if we take them off
it's actually it's tapped into the lock on the other side it's actually pushing the lock out so if we just hold that in place We've got the lock, lock uh, screws out with these. The plates are usually reasonably tight because they're actually totally fitted to the action. You can usually just screw your main lock through back into that one, pull it out. So there's the there's the right hand lock. And then turn it over. And usually what you can then do is put your bolt through there. A little tap. Will be enough to dislodge it. And there's the left hand lock. Everything looks fine with that. Right. So next job we might do is remove the trigger guard. Right, now here's a, this is another wood screw that holds the trigger plate in place into the stock. Ah, there we go. No, that's, not a, that's not a wood screw, that actually goes through to the tang on the other side. Right. Now we've got just this big screw here. That one there, that one's actually been ground for some other job. Yeah, that should do the job. to hold the top lever out of the way when you do this. Can you see that? We'll just move over here so you can see. Uh, but in this case, because it's just jammed to one side, we don't need to. Oh, there we go. See, that's the trigger plate's coming out now because it's threaded into the trigger plate. Now, the moment of truth. What's going on here? Ah, look. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on, I'll just lift you up. Look there. So there's the culprit that was making the trigger plate bulge out. That's a piece of... What is that? 
Is it a piece of firing pin? It's a little piece of pin. I think it's the tip of a firing pin. All right, well, that's easy enough to work out. Let's push that out there. Oh, look, it suddenly can always be very gentle when you do this point because there's a lot of very thin, especially in a side lock. I definitely need to test. I've had the stock off this before. So, oh, there we go. Okay, the cat does just lifts up. All right, as you can see, see those bits there? You gotta make sure you don't break, break those off. I'm just gonna be very gentle at that point. Well, in a way, I'm quite glad. I was thinking that I might have actually broken the um, mm. this spring here, and uh, a piece of that had fallen down into the action, but it was obviously the fire. Right, so let's just take the barrel off now that we're able. small on here all right so we look here there's one firing pin there can you see that on there and the tip is missing off the other firing pin so now that's a firing pin that I've actually made because I've replaced both the firing pins in this using 4140 steel which seemed to be a good compromise between brittleness and uh, so what I'm doing now is just taking out the firing pin retaining screw I probably don't even need to take it all the way out just loosen it and this will probably come out there we go so it was just a broken firing pin all along now hopefully <coughs> biggest worry is that I'm hoping that we haven't bent this too far out of shape that was sort of out of place a bit there that should have been back in its hole there but that's better <laughs> all right well I can easily enough make another one of those. They're very simple. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll take the other one out and uh, we can use that as a template for the tip, for the length of the tip and stuff. Making firing pins, I always make them a little bit longer anyway. And then file them back to get the firing pin protrusion. I'm just going to put those screws back in their place so they don't fall out and get lost. I didn't show the actual machining because uh, it's pretty boring and if you look at a lot of my other videos you'll see machining but basically I've, I've uh, machined this back to nominal 5 mils, which is what the uh, original firing pins are and I've made it, well I thought I'd made it actually long enough, but if you look at that, I haven't quite got I haven't quite got it quite long enough yet. So um of course I didn't want to have it sticking out any further than I had to out of the headstock because you tend to get deflection, but I'll have to probably take another few mils off that. So I'll just do it now. So I've taken that down almost to the same diameter there now. But what I've decided to do, because this is kind of, it will be difficult to get that exactly the same diameter, is I'll actually cut it off now and I'll turn it around and I'll actually, I'll cut the tip on that end and uh, get the tip the correct length. And I can then, I can then just file, file the back end of the pin. It's just got a, it's the pin, end of the pin is just a plain flat surface so I can then just file the end back to get it to the right level. Uh, before I do that though I'll try it in the gun, make sure that it fits and I've got the right firing pin protrusion. Alright so I've finished the tip on the firing pin, I've actually rounded it off. Still a little bit long but I'm just 
trying it in the gun now and uh, I did I did have to actually just make it make the tip a little bit longer it was actually didn't quite have enough protrusion but if we look at this the protrusion is pretty much exactly the same as the other one now uh, there is actually a figure for that I think it might be Oh, four thou or something like that. Um, I can't quite remember now, but I'm not going to even go to bother measuring it because it's the same as the other one, and the other one's been firing reliably. So, um, you know, and it's obviously not excessive. So I'm just going to leave it at that. The next step is going to be to cut the little groove in there, which just holds the retaining screw, which stops the stops the firing pin being able to come out the back. I'm going to measure the distance from here to here and I'll measure the distance of the groove and I might use some blue layout compound and just mark this mark the space so I've marked the uh, whole outside surface of the firing pin new firing pin with layer blue layout fluid and then just use and then measure the distance uh, on the other one and scratched it and then used a file just to just to show the part that needs to be filed so I'll put this in a vise and do that now. Alright, so I've finished grinding a little trough in this firing pin. As you can see, it's not exactly the same as the other one, but it's similar. That should do the job. So the only other job we've got to do now is you'll see this firing pin is just a tad longer than the other one. So what I'm going to do is just take it out on the on the um, grinder out under the house in my workshop and I'll just grind the end till it's almost I'll take them both so it's almost the same length and then I'll just finish it off um, with a file just to with a fine file to um, just to dress it right so it's all finished filed to the same length as the other one as you can see the uh, the cutout for the retaining screw is about the same depth my new ones that slightly longer the trough but that doesn't really make any difference so uh, now we can put it in the gun all right so we should be able to put this in now we need to make sure our little little groove that we've cut in the side of it is facing downwards towards the retaining screw so we'll put that in there there we go shove it all the way in and then we'll just get a screwdriver now you've got to make sure with these retaining screws you don't do them right up so that they're tied against the the uh, firing pin often you only, they only need to just go up generally till they're like maybe just a bit below flush there and then just grab the firing pin and that will no longer come out so but it still moves freely let's have a look at the, the breech face So, right, let's measure that firing pin protrusion. I didn't actually bother to do it. To, normally I'm quite careful when I do this, but because I have the other pin, which actually works quite well, I figured, well, if I just make it so it's about the same as that one, I should be all right. Okay, I've got the pin pushed all the way in. So that's the firing pin protrusion there. So let's read that. So we'll read it in, I kind of know it, even though this is a metric gun, I tend to do everything metric. I know everything imperial. So if we look at this, it's 0 0.025 for 0.041 yeah, about well, about 0.04 actually 0 0.04 so um, four thousandths of an inch let's put the other pin in this one's been in for well, quite a few years now and it's actually I made this one as well because both the firing pins in this gun broke and it's actually been working quite well so hopefully this one this one doesn't break as well again I'll just turn this so that it 
is just below flush. Both my pins are about the same size, the same length. And as you can see, the firing pin protrusion is pretty much the same on both of them. So now we can put it back together again. All right, with a bit of wiggling, I got the stock in place. The secret was there. I actually pulled the safety catch back because the safety catch was forward. So what we can now do is put the trigger plate on. I'm hoping this didn't get sprung by that little piece of broken broken uh, firing pin that was caught under here, if you recall. Um, I'm wondering whether this has been a little bit bent. But I'll put it together first, I'll see what it looks like. If it's bent, I might have to take it out and sort of just give it a little tap. So I've screwed this screw up here now, and you can see this trigger plate's actually sticking out by about half, maybe half a mil. Down here, it's flush here. And this is, I haven't actually put the tank screw in yet. I might just tighten the tank screw up first and see what happens. But I think what's happened is it's actually bent the trigger plate, bolted out slightly. So I think what I need to do is take it out and just bend this end down a little bit just to bring this back. Just because it just looks a bit unsightly at the moment. All right, so I've done up the tank screw now. Yeah, and this is still like, you know, it's, it's flush there. But here, where this, where this bulge here is, it's probably sticking out about a quarter of a mil or something like that. All right, so I took this trigger plate off and I just sat it on top of the vise there, uh, just with the vise about here. And then I gave it a tap with the brass hammer and kept putting it on. And then I actually managed, I could see each time I did it, it set down a little bit flatter. And then in the now that I've done up this screw and the tank screw, and I've also done up this, oops, this one that goes through the through the tank the opposite way into the tank at the top. You can see this is pretty much smooth now, so I've actually fixed that. So I'll know next time if 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 I ever go to open the gun and it just if there's any mechanical problem at all, I'll just not persevere, just take it off the range and bring it home and pull it apart because it was only because I kept mucking around with it and trying to open it and or trying to close it that the little piece of firing pin went in here and bent that. So it was actually my fault. So I feel a bit stupid about that. But anyway, you learn by your mistakes. So all we got to do now is just just take these out. There. I just put these screws in here so they're in the right spot and I wouldn't lose them. Put the trigger guard on. Put the locks in, and it'll be all done. All right, so we got the trigger guard on. So that was just a matter of screwing it back on and uh, till it just goes past and when you go any further then you bring it back and put the two screws in here. So that's not too hard. So now it's time to put the locks in. So we'll, so we'll just push the firing pin, make sure the firing pin's all the way through so it doesn't catch or anything. There's the hammer you can see there. It's actually cocked at the moment. So, you know, these locks are always cocked when they're open so um so we'll get this little toe here goes in the front drop it in so that goes in there just always checking that your triggers are not jammed all right so there you have it new firing pin i've actually sorted this kind of ugly looking problem on the bottom so we've got that back so it's pretty much pretty much it's I, when I feel it I can just feel the edge but visually it looks pretty good I don't think I'd be able to get it any better than that and I'm not sure what it was like originally of course you know I think I think when they make these they actually fit the trigger guard and they file it all together which is how they get it nice and smooth, smooth but that's not too bad so we better just give it a bit of a test So that seems to be working all right. What we might do now is I might just get a prime. I'll just get a get a fired case. I'll put a primer in it, and we'll put it in this left barrel and uh, fire it, and just have to make sure it fires all right. And have a look at the indent in the primer. Now it's actually six o'clock in the morning here, so uh, don't underestimate how noisy a primer is. So I don't want to wake up half the neighbourhood. So I'm going to actually 
just to use something, because I just want to do this now, I'm going to actually use a, a bit of uh, toweling stuff to actually muffle the sound. So the left barrel is going to be the back trigger. Ready? That was loud even with that. Let's have a look at that case. It's amazing how much stuff comes out of a primer. I don't know if you can see that. Like the barrels are nice and clean, so it's not out of the barrels. So that's just the, the ash from the primer. And we've got a lovely smell of uh, prime in here. And you even get a lot of ash when you don't have the the uh, powder burning as well. Yeah, let's have a look at this primer. It's interesting, we've got an interesting phenomenon here. It's actually bowed the, I don't know if you can actually see that in the actual case, the case head has been pushed in and then the pressure, pressure has actually pushed the actual little inside out of the primer. Um, but it's obviously just because that we didn't have the pressure of the uh, of the cartridge. We've obviously got more pressure inside the pr little primer than outside here, so it's actually pushed the primer against the breech face and pushed the uh, and pushed the back of the case forward. During an actual shot, of course, as this pressure built up, you'd also get a pressure build up inside the case, which would actually be supporting this. But uh, yeah, that's a phenomenon I haven't seen before. Anyway, the main thing we're really looking at is the indentation in the primer. And uh, I think that's adequately deep. I think we're gonna get nice, reliable ignition with that. So I'm happy enough with that. That's another successful repair of a firearm. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please push the like button. And if you like this kind of content, please Feel free to subscribe and until next time, thanks for watching.